beginning. Uh, let's talk about what's the perfect system. Um, I think all over the world there exist different uh, systems in treating lymphedema patients. Um, I think the perfect system is the one that's the most useful for the very patient you are treating at the moment. There are different systems and uh, you always have to think. Without thinking, just, just doing, you won't... Uh, I think the, the therapy won't fit to the patient. So, so we have really to decide which step to do uh, for this, exactly for this patient. That's a lot uh, to think, but, but I think you will have the greatest effort with that. Um, there exist also different schools in the treatment. It's Dr. Fodder that's uh, the treatment I learned at the very beginning, and uh, then also exists Dr. Fer the treatment of Dr. Furley. I think the grip techniques are nearly the same. They, they differ a little bit, but at the end, they all go to the anatomy and physiology of the lymphatic system. And I think if you are a, a therapist, uh, that had one of these concepts, I think you can manage. I, I think it doesn't matter which uh, concept you have learned. Um, what do we have to know before starting the CDT, the complex decongestive therapy? We have two different phases. We have the phase uh, for decongestion and we have the phase for Sorry for that. Uh, decongestion. And we have the, I don't see my presentation. I'm very sorry. I have to move you a little bit to the side. And we have phase two for conservation. So I think that's also different, very, very different. Do I want to reduce the edema or do I want to conserve it like it is? That's a, a big, big difference in the treatment, belonging the, the the sense of lymphatic drainage. But I will tell after about this a little bit later on. You can see my presentation? Yes. Yes. yes? Okay, so now we have to know about the lymph vessel system. We have to know that there is an initial lymph system, that we have collectors, yeah, that we have um, on the initial system, we have junctions where the lymphatic where the, where the lymph should go in, if they are disturbed, that won't, we can't manage it. We should know about the tissue system. Yeah, that is keeping the lymphatic system in its place. Here you can see the junctions. Yeah, and here you can see the soft tissue all around that keeps the, the system in its place. So we should we should have an idea of the the place where this lymph system is starting. Yeah, it's starting onto the skin and uh, it should should be movable. If the tissue is too stiff, then there is no movability, no movement anymore possible. And because of that, perhaps we cause the first, that's the first step to get a lymphedema. Um, we should also know that there exist valves. We should know that lymph angions uh, are in one line. And after each lymph angion, we have this valve. This valve is very, very important so that the lymph uh, can go on and go straight ahead 
onto the proximal um, region. So with these valves, we can be sure that no, nothing into the collectors or nothing into the angions goes back to the distal areas. So that's also important to know. And we should also know if this, if all of this exists anymore. If we had patients with radiation, um, we are not sure anymore. Perhaps um, all this got disturbed. What you see here now is a lymph collector, just to have an idea how small and how fragile a lymph collector is, so that you can understand that uh, with radiation or with a severe um, accident, a trauma, uh, you can disturb this collector easily. We also should know uh, that it is a one-way system. The lymphatic system is a one-way system. And at the very beginning, it starts in the skin. And at the very end, it starts, it ends in the venous system. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what we also should know that we have lymph nodes. And we, we also should... Now I see you, Lower. Sorry for that. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, I don't see my presentation anymore because you, because you got very very big screen. Big here. Can you share it again? Head. Because I can. It's fixed, but you can share it again. So it's it works. Okay. Um, okay, you also also should have an idea of the lymph vessel system, yeah? So, uh, or of the lymph node system and know how many lymph nodes we have in the area that has pr probably been disturbed. Um, if we regard the vessel system, we have here the axillary vessel system. It goes on to the venous system, as I told you before. And we should uh, have an idea of the direction that this, that this system goes to. So we have the dorsolateral territory, we have a dorsomedial territory, we have a intermediate territory, and all this goes up to the axillary lymph nodes. So from the axillary lymph nodes, we go from the lateral ones to the central uh, lymph nodes, and then we go to the clavicular lymph nodes. So because of that, um, if there was a radiation or something like this in this area. Um, uh, Dr. Petra, just one question, because some people are not seeing the presentation. Can you uh, close and reshare again? I'm getting a lot of messages that the presentation I should is not close. Seen. I should close my presentation and open it up yes. again. Yes, please. OK. No, stop sharing. Close the sharing. Yes, I did. Oh, that's a pity if you don't see the presentation, yeah? Some people are not seeing. I'm getting some. Does it work now? For me, yes. It is okay now, yes. I think people see now. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was talking about. I don't know when when you lost the presentation. I was talking about. I think you can go back uh, two, three faces. slides again. Yes, I can go back to where? Uh, to the faces. Yes, here it was. Then uh, here we had the. Sorry for that.
nevertheless uh how, however we are we are talking about the no now the, i cannot see anything i know i know i know yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys, for the technical issue. We'll solve it now. I'm sorry for that. I can't. Okay. I can't. I can't see anything now. However, we have to go on. <laughs> Yeah. Also, without presentation, we we have. I will try again in between. Um, you can send we, it to me. I can share it. I will try again. No, I think it works. Does it work for you? Yes, I can see now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was talking about. I was here talking about Dr. Fota, talking about the different phases, phase one, phase two that that uh, that we have, the one belonging the decongestion, the other one uh, belonging the conservation, as you remember. And I said it's the, it's important that you know the different physiology and different anatomy of the vessel system for the, the initial lymph vessel system, the lymph angions, the valve system, also knowing how, how a lymph node is working. And then we had this picture of the vena cava and, and we had the, the system, the, uh, this one picture of the collector. And then I went on, perhaps you have seen that, with the water sheets and yes. the canal. You know. Okay, Kay. so I think we can, can go on now with this slide. You can enlarge the slides for the screen. Yeah. I will try. Yeah. Um, yes, it's we, working now. Yes, it's working, but we don't see. Yes, now we see here. We see the the breast, and we see that the different areas of the breast go up to the terminus, go up to the last part of the system, and um, we also see. I think that's if I put my my stick on it. I will. I will. I won't do it anymore. Um, you see it up. Uh, number one and two goes to to the axillary lymph nodes. Now you have. Uh, if you have a mastectomy, um, mostly the axillary lymph nodes has been disturbed. Not always, but a lot of them perhaps have been disturbed. Um, they have been extirped or they have been um, disturbed through radiation. And this causes a problem because everything that goes to the axillary lymph nodes will stop the, the normal wave of the lymphatic system stops if there is no axillary if there are no axillary lymph nodes anymore. Hopefully you have a cephalica area, that uh, gives you the, the possibility that some thing of the lymph um, uh, vessel system is going up to the neck outside, yeah, for the lateral way. But a lot of, of the, the, the areas are going to the axilla. That's why we can get a severe edema for the arm. Um, in this picture, you see the, the system of the neck. And if you look at the lymph nodes, you see subtrapezoid lymph nodes outside here. And you see the, the sub, supraclavicular trunk. Um, perhaps something goes on directly to this area. 
then you have good luck. If you also had radiation of the neck, um, also this system can't work anymore. Then you have no chance not to get a um, secondary lymph edema of the arm after the, the surgery. That's how it looks like. You see the different sheets so that you can imagine that the lymph nodes uh, are laying in the outer side, outside of the sternocleidomastodeus. The sternocleidomastodeus is not here anymore. And you see inside the inner region of the lymph nodes um, also a very uh, important thing to know that if you treat the patients more or less soft, you reach other regions of the lymphatic system, of the lymph nodes. Um, if the patient has decided to do a reconstruction, you can do reconstruction of the breast, you can do reconstruction of the skin, um, you can't do reconstruction of the axillary lymph nodes. So um, if you have a breast, again and and you are happy with this uh, reconstruction and with this operation um, you still have this problem with the axillary lymph nodes so perhaps that is also very important um, for the patients to know uh, operation of lymph vessel system is not that um, we don't we don't have great effort with that as far as I know. So just to have said it, how can we now evaluate our treatment and um, what is the first step for this? It's a good anamnesis. For each patient, we really do need uh, diagnostic procedures and we start with the anamnesis. What's the case history? Um, what, what has been done from the doctors? And then we can start the inspection. After that, when we did the inspection, we do the palpation. What are we looking for? We're looking for a stemma sign. We are looking for how we can, um, how, how will the skin, how we feel the skin What's possible? How we how can we move the skin? Is it soft or is it harder? Yeah. So these basic diagnostic procedures um, give us the chance to make make um, a staging so that we can say we determine the stage. Are we in stage one, two, or three? We will talk about this a little bit later on. Um, as we said, perhaps you know the stemma sign. Is it possible to make a fold on the fingers or on the toes? We have the stage one. Stage one is reversible. Um, we have a high protein edema. That's why we can see it on the second picture. If we push, we will see it after that. But Probably it, it, it is reversible if the patients stay long in, in lying position. Hopefully it goes back the edema. For the second stage, um, we have an irreversible edema, so it won't go back spontaneously. Yeah, that won't is not possible anymore. And we also have fibrosclerosis yeah we have proliferation of fat so it's a pathology and it's much harder as the other one the first one is very soft stage two we have a much harder edema and in stage stage three we have a pathology with a lot of fibrosclerosis it's very hard and um, we, we also have a irreversible edema. We should just know that there are different stages because we need another treatment for that. For the secondary lymph edema, um, two quarters are mama edemas. 
Yeah, are arm lymph edemas. The upper limb has much more edema than uh, the lower limb. Perhaps it's also very interesting, and that's why it's so important that we are talking about this today. Just look through these pictures uh, so that we are not running out of time. Um, what could be the risk to get an edema? It can be the OP technique. It can be, as I said before, how many lymph nodes have been removed. If they extirp just a small number, uh, it could be good luck. If they remove about 20 lymph nodes in the axillary region, uh, I, I think we will have we will get a secondary lymph edema. Um, how many collectors have been disturbed? As you remember, we had this one photograph with the collector. If they have been disturbed, um, they don't build that well anastomosis as the vessel system. Yeah, the venous system uh, has no problem with anastomosis, but the collectors have. So that's also a, a great risk. Yeah, the radiation therapy is is uh, disturbing all the collectors in this area, so great risk. And that that's also important, how, how big was the area? Did it reach just the axillary area? Did it reach the whole trunk on the side? Or did it also reach the neck? If we have neck, trunk and, um, and axillary area with radiation, we get severe edemas. Also, the older of the patient and perhaps the weight of the patient, but but as I have seen it, it's it's most the most important is the radiation and the number of removed lymph nodes and collectors. Okay, um, why can it be that an edema develops years after surgical treatment? It could be that the patient had an accident with the arm, and there is too much. A lymph in this time and it overflows this ill system that it's not that powerful as it was before and that could cause a little fibrosis and with this fibrosis the last possibility um, the last way got disturbed and by that you get the edema yeah uh, at the first picture you see before the compression therapy, second photograph, you see the patient after compression therapy. We can be sure that they just removed it for a very, very short time and and did the compression after that quickly, because otherwise we would see uh, that the, the, the edema comes back. So that's also very the first important uh, thing I will tell about compression. Compression is a long-term therapy, it's long-life therapy, and uh, the long this long-life therapy also means that if you have such a severe problem as this lady has, you can't just use it if you like to, you have to use it 24 hours a day. Otherwise, you will get the edema back. There are some complications. I just run through this. That's the uh, erysipel. Erysipel uh, is a streptococcus infection. It hurts. It it's uh, you get high temperature with that, and you need um, um, a treatment from the doctor. So in this time, I would say we are not allowed to do compression. That's important to know, but it hurts, so so I think it also won't be possible. Um, Streptococcus infection gets very, very fast if the skin treatment doesn't work. If the, the skin uh, is worse, you get the streptococcus much faster than otherwise, and then you can't do compression, so that's why you cause a problem with this. So very, in, very, very important. 
Um, you can also get lymph cysts. That's not the, the big problem. Mostly they are not that severe. You can get a lymph angiofibrosis. Um, if you have lymph angiofibrosis, the, uh, compression therapy is the, the most important thing in the CDT because with fibrosis, if you don't have an effort with the lymphatic drainage, it's the, the best thing to do compression and give some paddings onto the fibrosis. Perhaps Loa will tell you what, what, what is possible to put on. And after this, hopefully you have a fibrosis that the, the, uh, the lymph, the, the fluid goes through again and then you can do the lymphatic drainage. Otherwise, on the distal area of this arm, for example, it doesn't make sense to do lymphatic drainage if the fibrosis is not able to let the fluid go through. Um, yes, then a change to malignity would also be very important that we see and we uh, except now we are in malignity and that we uh, change the treatment totally to palliative care, perhaps. Okay, the difference between the maligne and the benigne lymphedema is that the maligne lymphedema goes very, very quick. Yeah tightly filled, that's a totally other consistence than on the benign lymphedema. And um, perhaps you have brain varicosis. And very often you also have problems with the nerve. So lymphatic drainage is one of the possibilities for treatment. As you see it here, we have the skin care, we have the lymphatic drainage, we have gymnastics, we have exercises, and we have the compression. However uh, you do compression, there also exists, for example, the machine decongestion therapy. You have to prepare the patient before you start with the compression. Um, it's for the machine decongestion therapy, it's very, very important to start with the treatment of the lymphatic drainage. For the compression, perhaps it's not necessary. It depends on what phase we are. If we are in phase one and we do decongestion, we want to reduce the edema before we do the compression. That's our a uh, challenge how to do it. We can do the lymphatic drainage, we can do uh, after that the skin care, we can do the compression and then we do after that the exercises. That's important not to do the exercises without any compression. That's very important. In phase two we try to conserve the edema. That means Perhaps we have, again, lymphatic drainage, but it's not that important. Important is that we do compression and we do the exercises. Never do the exercises without compression. Otherwise, you get in this area where you have the, the, the secondary arm lymph edema, you have in this area more blood. That's why you have more liquid in the interstitium. That's why um, you have, you cause an edema and you don't have any pressure against that. If we look at the Starling equilibrium, uh, we can think about that uh, we move water outside. And if we have compression on it, we reduce the possibility to get it outside. Perhaps that's very in interesting for you, put the compression on and then do the exercise. Um, Loi, 
should I show the 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 treatment of the bandaging? Is that okay for you? Or yes. are we running totally out of time so that, no, no, that you okay. don't want to go on? Uh, no, it's okay. You can. We still um, have time. You see here the the bandaging of the of the arm with long stretch bandage material. Perhaps you will tell after that about it. Um, when do we lose? When do we? Sorry. When do we use long stretch bandaging? We use it when we have an inactive patient. If the patient is not using the arm, inactive doesn't mean that he is not able to go, that he is not able to walk, that he is not able to to do his activities of daily living. Uh, but it means that he is not possible. It he is not able to use the arm. When he's not using the arm, it doesn't make sense to take a bandage material where we want to push the muscles against it, where we need high pressure. Yeah. Um, we need now a bandaging that has um, the possibility to reduce, to give pressure without any exercises. And as you see now, we start always on the distality distal and go up. We always try to overlap double so that we have always the same pressure from distal to proximal. In this case, we didn't do bandaging of the fingers. That's only if we have no stemma sign. If you have stemma sign, you also have to do the bandaging of the fingers also. If the priest, if we had mastectomy, the secondary lymph edema normally starts on the proximal area. So if it starts on the proximal area and you do measurement and you don't have a lot of edema on the forearm, so it's not necessary to do the finger bandaging, but it's always necessary to do the whole bandaging treatment for the whole arm. It doesn't make sense because you have to reduce pressure from distal to proximal. That's why you have also. Do you see the video? Is it does it work? Yes, it's working, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's very important to use it for the whole arm, not just some areas, really up to the axillary. I will go on now with the with the next video. Um, it's the video of the short stretch bandaging. It is totally different. No, I think it won't. It doesn't work. It's too. It's too slow. Oh, sorry for that. No, it's not working. No, it's not working. It's not working. Um, now we we saw before we saw the the long stretch bandaging. Um, after that, I would have wanted to show you the short stretch bandage, but it's it didn't it didn't work. I'm really sorry for that. I have 
hear a lot of Oh. Will you be sharing the screen again? Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't work. I'm really sorry about that. I, I don't have a chance to, to open it. I try again. OK. Yes. OK. No. Um, just to, to talk about it, because I think the video is too long. That's the problem in my presentation, okay. because it's a very okay. long, long video and it, it doesn't work. But um, nevertheless, the short stretch bandaging is a totally other way of thinking. The way uh, of thinking is you want to have muscle pump, you want to reduce with the muscle pump the edema. Um, you try to push against the bandage and with this working pressure, um, you are able to push against a wall, a wall of bandage material. That's why it's so important that the, the muscle pump has something to push against and so that this lymph edema can reduce from distality to proximal alone by the exercise of the patient. That's, that is very important, I think. That's the big difference between the long stretch and the short stretch bandaging. For the short stretch bandaging, I think Loa will tell you then what products uh, we will use. Perhaps uh, if you if you show the products, then I can tell some words about it. Is that OK? So that we yes. uh, that we can can add here some information. And um, the next thing is the the arm are the arm sleeves. So if we are in the reduction phase, uh, we can't use sleeves. It is not possible. If the edema is severe at the beginning and we have the patient, uh, let's say, three weeks or four weeks in our rehabilitation program and we try to reduce the edema, it doesn't make sense to have a sleeve. So we always use the bandage material. But in the uh, conservation phase in phase two, it makes sense that the patients get the sleeves because it's much more um, useful to to take for the for the whole life. Yeah, just to reduce the edema, we need the bandage materials. And then, if we have good luck, now I try to show you this video. Um, it's one of the sleeves I like a lot because they overlap on the deltoideus. I try again. Can you enlarge the screen? Yes, screen? I try. I try, Loa. I try all the time. <laughs> I'm fighting with the technique here. Because I already wanted to show you now this video. Yeah, working. Yes. As you see now, this arm is flat knitted. I think you will tell about it a little bit yes. after that. And it overlaps to the deltoid because it's 
it's um, a problem if the sleeve ends on the axillary region because uh, if there is a stop with the compression on the axillary region, um, perhaps you get fibrosis there. So I like it a lot to overlap here, as you can see. And I use a long stretch bandaging over that so that we have root pressure up to the clavicular, up to the acromion. It's much better than to stop the, the sleeve somewhere on the arm. Yeah. And it also doesn't go down, and that's very, very useful for the patients. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, to remove it, so so you see it now with the hand on. That's the other possibility. If it stops on the axillary region, and you see also here the possibility that you have compression on the fingers. That's very useful for the patients. Okay, so again, um, there doesn't exist any complex decongestive therapy without skin care. As you remember, without skin care, you get very, very fast problems with the with the skin. Perhaps you get an erysipela. If you have an erysipela, you can stop the whole CDT and start again at the very beginning. So that's really, really important. Of course, nutrition is an is also a, um, a big tool. Um, I won't talk a lot about this because I'm I'm physiotherapist. And uh, we have the lymphatic drainage. If we don't have the possibility to do lymphatic drainage very, very often, it's not that problem as if we don't have the possibility to do compression. Compression is the, the, the most important for our uh, treatment as therapists. And in the compression, we can do the exercises. Exercises are important. Exercises needn't to be done as exercises five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes a day. And most important is that the exercises are used as a tool to learn the patients that they can move their arm, that they can use it. Yeah, that they don't need these exercises anymore, but they should take uh, whatever is possible. They should do whatever is possible with their arm under compression, because then they reduce the edema. Um, and that is what we all want. So I thank you for your interest. Uh, feel free to, to ask questions. I give over to Loe. I hope that's okay for you now. And sorry for for my delay. Um, it was about the technic problems, I think. Thank you so much, Dr. Betra. Thanks uh, for the all participants. Uh, I will just share also my screen for a quick presentation about the compression uh, products. Just a second. So I hope you can see my screen. OK, so uh, so that uh, the presentation is going to speak about um, 
the compression product that we can offer for uh, the post mastectomy lymphedema in general. As Dr. Petra said in her presentation, we have the complex decongestion therapy uh, concept in the acute phase and the maintenance phase. In the acute phase, we have the skin care, the manual lymphatic drainage, the compression therapy, and the exercise. And in the maintenance phase, we have also the skincare, compression therapy, uh, manual compression, manual lymphatic drainage, compression therapy, and exercise. But here, the difference is in between uh, both of uh, the compression therapy, where in the acute phase, we have the compression in the compression bandage. And in the maintenance phase, we try to use the, uh, men, uh, the compression hosiery or compression stocking or garments for the patient. So in the acute phase, as you saw also in the video, we have some layers that we have to put. We have different products that we have to offer for the patient with lymphedema. And the main target in the acute phase is that we decrease the swelling as much as possible and as quick as possible. So we, we would like to have a material that is somehow reusable for the patient because they're going to use it for some long time and washable as well. So we have the Molly Lost. The first product is the Molly Lost, which is a compression bandage, an elastic conforming bandage that we usually use it for the bandage of the fingers in the upper limb and the bandage of the toes in the lower limb. Usually it comes in a pack of 20 pieces, so you can use some bandages. Uh, we usually use three or four bandages around the fingers and the toes. Yeah, we have different sizes for also the fingers and toes, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve centimeter. Usually in the cases of the fingers, we use around four and six centimeter, depending on the size of the fingers. And in the toes, it's usually four centimeter, which also we can double it uh, into two layers in order to make it half for example, for kids' cases. So this is usually the first <laughs> product that we use. Uh, just a second. And uh, the second uh, product is the tubular bandage. The tubular bandage is called TG tubular bandage. We use it also as a skin-friendly layer. This skin friendly layer, we put it directly on the skin. It comes in a roll. This roll, we use it uh, depend on the size of the patient. It's made from 67% of cotton and 33% of viscous. So it's uh, when during application, it is wrinkless. So there is no wrinkles at all in order to prevent any pressure points. We have different sizes also from uh, the arm, the big arm. It can fit also till the trunk. So even for the big swelling that we can see for the arm or the legs, we can have uh, sizes that can fit for uh, those patients. So it's also a seamless uh, tuber bandage. <laughs> then the second, uh, third layer is usually, or the second layer we usually say is the padding. Why we use the padding? We use usually the padding in order to protect any bony prominence and also in order to fill the gaps in the skin uh, in uh, in any uh, skin gaps in between the swelling, uh, we can say also to protect uh, the skin. So we have different type of products that we can use as a padding. The first one, which is a classical one, is a Silona undercast padding. The Silona undercast padding is made from poly uh, synthetic cotton. This synthetic cotton can be used uh, once. It's not a reusable product, and usually it is elastic. Oh, not elastic, it's a stretchable one that you can stretch it and um, take the contour of different areas in the body. So it's something that very is easy to be used. The second type of padding is called Rosita Software. Also here that is a type of padding. It is thicker, a little bit of thicker a thickness, but it's made from foam rubber bandage. This foam rubber bandage can also Round uh, around the arm or the leg during the application of the compression therapy, either in the arm or either in the leg, where also this product is washable, so the patient can wash it and reuse it uh, for uh, some time with uh, their application of compression therapy during their acute phase or the decongestion phase. So it's made from foam rubber uh, uh, padding bandage. <sighs> 
Then we have the Rosedel SC. The Rosedel SC is combining two layers in one product. It's combining the uh, skin contact layer, which is the tubular bandage, and the rubber foam uh, and the rubber foam uh, padding in one product. So from one side, you can see that the uh, the TG or the skin contact layer on on one side. So this is on directly on the skin, and on the other side, you can see the foam. So in that case, if you use a Rosal SC, you don't need to use the tubular bandage or the skin contact layer because it's already there. It's built in in the product. So it's just the two layers in one product. The Rosal SC. Then this, the, the next layer is the most important layer, which is the Rosedal K, which is a short stretch bandage. The short stretch bandage is one of the most important things in the compression therapy in the acute stage because this product that has, first of all, it's made from 100% cotton and it's reusable, it's washable up to 50 times. And here you can get the maximum uh, pressure that you need during the application because this uh, short stretch bandage has a characteristics of high high working pressure and low resting pressure. So so it means what it means that the patient first of all during movement during muscle pump the the more the patient is moving the more the patient is doing muscle pump the more pressure you will have and the more uh, we can say lymphatic fluid or lymphatic drainage it will increase with. Uh, the movement of uh, the patient with the short stretch bandage and at the rest or at sleeping we can say the patient is also feeling comfortable so it's safe for the patient to sleep with it so the patient usually use it for 23 hours per day and as we said it's washable and reusable for uh, 50 times so also good for acute stage uh, we have combined everything that the patient would like to use in the acute stage in something called Rosita Lymph. So it is a set where everything are there. We can see here uh, in the photo you have the short stretch bandage, you have the padding, there is the SC, you have the, <laughs> the molly lost for the finger and even you have the complex. The complex is type of rubber foam that you use it in order to break down uh, the fibrotic tissue as an extra uh, uh, as an extra application in case you have any fibrosis. So in the Rosida lymph, you have everything in one set, in one uh, product, and we have different sizes from Rosida lymph. We have two sizes for the upper limb and two sizes for the lower limb, small, large for the upper limb and small and large for the lower limb of Rosida lymph. This all product that we can use in the acute stage, then we go to the maintenance stage. In the maintenance stage, we usually recommend the patient to use arm sleeves or compression stocking if it's in the lower limb. And this is a classical treatment. In the com uh, we have a brand called Venusan. It's a Swiss brand. And we have also the arm sleeves. <coughs> the arm sleeves are available in a flat knitting made to measure uh, products. And the flat knitting, the difference between the flat and the circular knit is the stiffness. The flat knit is more stiff. You can make it in different shapes, in different if the patient is, has asymmetrical edema. So you can have different pressures uh, all over the stocking or the arm sleeve uh, and also uh, different textures. So we have Venus and Soft. The Venus and Soft is a soft product, less stiff product than comparing it to the Venus and Pro. They are uh, both available in beige and black color. They are, uh, the Venus and Soft is available in class one, class two, and class three of millimeter uh, mercury pressure. And Venus and Pro is available in class two and three. Uh, Venus and uh, flat knit arm sleeve, they are available in CG, which is from the arm, uh, from the arm bit to the rest, and then CG edge from the arm bit to the rest with silicon top band and then with uh, the the full arm sleeve till the knuckles from the arm bit till the knuckles with and without silicone and also the guantlet is available in the flat net. If we go to the circular net as a Venusan product, we have the Venusan 7000. It's a stiff product as well. It's made from 62% of tactile polyamide and 26% of elastan plus 8% of cotton and 4% of sea cell in order to make it soft on the skin 
with also stiffness. They are available in class one, class two, and class three. Class three is available in mid to measure with different styles. And you can see here we have the CG, CGH, ZG, ZGH, and SH, CH, and SH, uh, ZH with the shoulder uh, belt if, in case the patient would like to cover also the deltoid um, in case uh, of a swelling there. Uh, this is regarding the arm sleeve. Uh, we also in Venusan have uh, lower limb compression stocking. And if someone is asking about the compression uh, stocking uh, later on. For the other option, some patients, they are non-compliant for the bandage or also they are non-compliant for uh, the compression stocking because whatever the reason is, uh, they cannot find someone that they can help them. Uh, the compression stocking is or the arm sleeve is very difficult for them for application. So uh, we have an alternative product uh, which is called the compression wrap ready wrap. The ready wrap is a concept of short stretch material with a high, very high stiffness index between 16 to 23 comparing to the short stretch is uh, almost the same stiffness index and it's a velcro uh, brand uh, Vel Velcro fastener that you can use it easily with uh, your patients and the patient can use it by themselves in order to apply a compression uh, arm sleeve or compression stocking by a Velcro application. It can be washed and can be used up to six months. It's available in upper limb and uh, it's available for the upper limb and available for the lower limb. Yes, this is what Dr. Petra is uh, applying in the camera. This is uh, Ready wrap for the gauntlet. She can apply it by herself on the camera. So we have uh, the ready wrap for the arms. Uh, the ready wrap for the arms, we have two pieces. One piece is from the armpit or from the upper arm till the rest. And here you can see we have Velcro. All the Velcro are color coded in three colors. So it's very easy for the patient to apply from white, light blue, dark blue. And they need to go through this color codes in order to close the ready wrap. We have also another a piece for the lower limb, which is a gauntlet. And the gauntlet is also coming in right and left in different sizes from small, medium, large, as well as the arm sleeves. The first one, this one is available in different lengths. We have three different lengths that we can use uh, for uh, different arm lengths and different circumference for sure from small, medium, large uh, sizes. May I say something, Loa? Yes, yes, please. Um, I like this wrap very much because uh, sometimes it's impossible for the patients to to go to to put on their 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 sleeves and also their stockings. They are not able to. Um, and sometimes the edema are kind of 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 different because if they are bigger on the distal areas and on the proximal area, the the um, I don't know the English word for that, but but if they are smaller, you know, so they can't use a sleeve. They should use the bandaging, and it's very uncomfortable. And for this, the the wrap is very very suitable. Did you understand? Do you know what I mean, Loa? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Uh, if if we have edemas that that can't get uh, a sleeve because of the the complicated edema they have, so that that it's it's much bigger on the end on the fingers than up, uh, then it's perfect. That's what I yep. wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yes, definitely. There is many people that they are, they have a problem of applying the stocking or applying the bandage and offering something for them that is easy for application, especially with very big that is not easy to apply or to to support them in compression therapy by any way. Ready wrap can solve this problem uh, by an easy application. Uh, then I would like to show you a short video on how we can apply the ready wrap. So here it's very easy to use. The patient can use it and wear it by themselves. Uh, we just see here that there is three colors, white, the light blue and dark blue of, uh, of the Velcro. 
and the patient can wear it. You have on the elbow side double pad in order for the patient to protect the uh, cubital area. Here we start with uh, closing the Velcro with the white color, the white color, then another white color uh, strap or Velcro, uh, light blue, sorry, I mean, light blue Velcro, then the other light blue Velcro on the upper end of the arm, followed by the dark blue Velcro on the lower end and the upper end. So it's very easy for the patient to understand how to wear it by themselves. So this is just to ensure that the pressure is OK. So here we need to stretch again each uh, Velcro uh, 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 strap in order to uh, in order to ensure the pressure is OK. After that, we need to apply it here, uh, the guantlet area. So we open the first Velcro and after opening it, just opening the Velcro, we have an extra pad around the rest. Uh, and then uh, we apply the guantlet uh, piece. So here also in the guantlet area, we need to follow the color code and we follow with the white. We close the white inside, then the light blue on the lower end of the guantlet, the dark blue after that. And the dark blue, and then we close the uh, the end of it, end of the arm sleeve over the guantlet. And here you can see that we have now an overlap between the piece of the guantlet and the piece of the arm sleeve in order to ensure that there is no gaps in between the two pieces. Uh, the, we have also in there for the ready wrap from the lower limb quickly and we'll just show you that we have ready wrap two for the toes we have the ready wrap uh, foot ct control in order to ensure the better better pressure uh, better pressure on uh, the foot we have the ready wrap cuff we have the ready wrap knee thigh and also an extender that we can use uh, on uh, on the patient whoever increase in their size and they don't and they want to still use the ready wrap they can use the extender in order to extend the uh, velcro wrap by 10 centimeter so thank you so much for your time uh, we will check if you have please if you have any question uh, address it on uh, the q and a uh, section and we will check it right now just a second. Um, what 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 was important for me is um, always, however, whatever compression you need, um, uh, you should take a cotton sleeve under this. So you you shouldn't put this uh, as we have seen it on the skin, because I have I I would be a bit, little bit afraid that that we get an irritation of the skin for that. OK, OK, so yeah. you mean in, in the padding, you would like to put some cotton on the yes. skin? Yes, before the tubular so, bandage or after the tubular bandage? Before, before it. So we do skin care, then we do the cotton and then we put the, the bandage material on because I, I'm afraid to get uh, an irritation of the skin. So you mean that because the tuber bandage is um, a cotton material, it's natural cotton material, so there is no synthetic thing that can affect it. It's always called skin contact layer, so the patient can, we put it on the skin just to, uh, to prevent any irritation. Then we put the cotton after uh, the tuber bandage. Mm -hmm. Like what you showed in the video, it's the same what you showed in the video. So yes. the CG is the stocking yes. it's the same. 
I just yes. wanted to say it because on yes. the on the on the pictures now there was none. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. So we have a question that we'd like to ask uh, from Ayman. How much pressure does it apply in millimeter mercury? And is it for the day time or night time or both? Which product are available for scrotal lymphedema? So what can we use for genital lymphedema? Uh, what type, what amount of pressure that we need to apply uh, and we apply during day or night and which, yeah, this is mainly the question. For genital uh, lymphedema, we do the compression at at the very end of the of the bandaging. That's most important. If if you do the bandaging of the leg, normally you have also to do bandaging of the leg if you have genital lymphedema. I think um, at first you do the the bandaging of the legs, and after that with a soft bandage material you do the compression. Um, we had this theme a, a long time ago in China where they they have severe problems with the genital lymph edema and uh, the solution was that uh, we put the the mole last for that the the small the the soft bandaging in a lot of layers on it and try to fix it around um, the 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 hips around or or take take um, some some fixing material for that and then try to put on some some trousers for that. Okay. Okay. So that we so that you can fix it. So so you do the 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 bandaging and then a soft a softer trouser on it so that you can reduce a second time but the most the the the, the biggest problem is how to do, go to the toilet after that that's a problem for the patient yeah Be because also there is uh, some other option that has been uh, uh, offered that if it's very big, very very big uh, scrotum uh, the scrotum can be bandaged by also uh, sometimes with uh, uh, molly last or the elastic one or the short stretch if it's very very big one uh, and as you said uh, doing uh, just uh, wearing very soft trousers and if uh, the toileting area that they need to to go to the toilet they can just try to use uh, some mobile things uh for uh for during the toilet uh, yeah depends uh, on the and size the, as and well. the second question i Was, i think you should yeah. you should use it all the time overnight yes. and and over the day that's it's okay. always the same question uh when can i put it off but i think we should we should get friend with with the bandaging uh yeah. because otherwise you you can't reduce it yeah. And scrotum, uh, no, also genital edema is normally reduce very fast, very easily, if they uh -huh. have a good a good pressure on. Yep. Another question is, what is the maximum period of time for bandaging? Because usually this question comes if the patient is going to keep on the bandage for the weekend for a couple or two, three days. So what is the maximum time for bandaging uh, from your experience? I think two days is three days is very, very long. Okay. Two days. Two days. Yes. Three okay. three is very long. Okay. Uh self bandaging okay. is the solution for that. Okay. Yes. Self bandaging, if the patient can do it, it will be perfect that they can change or if they won't use the ready wrap. Also, yeah, they can do it. Uh, there is other question for varicose vein lower limp edema. What is your recommendation? It's out of the topic of today. Uh, venous, venous, yeah. venous, 
edema, so so uh, insufficient venous system. Yeah, I think so. Venous uh, insufficiency, yeah. chronic venous you, insufficiency. You you need you need much more pressure for venous system than for the lymph edema because the the lymph edema is under the skin, and you don't need that much pressure for venous system if the valves of the venous system don't uh, work anymore. You have the last big valve in the in the ah. Uh, I don't know in English <laughs> on the on the beginning of the leg. How do you how do you say to this uh, on the ligamentum inguinale? Inguinal ligament. Have, yes, the, there you yeah. have the uh, there you have the last valve, and uh, for this you need much a lot of pressure that you can that you can help the patients with with venous problems. Totally other way okay. of thinking than on the on the lymphedema side. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, question: uh, Does bandaging help to treat axillary web syndrome? Axillary what syndrome? Web. Web. Axillary web syndrome. I don't understand it in English. I don't know what axillary web syndrome means. I think something under they feel something under the the uh, the armpit, but I'm, I'm not sure about it as well. Another question: I have a patient getting fibrotic ring around and. Uh, could you please explain? Could you please try to find other words for that? The one who who wrote us, so that we perhaps can answer. Yeah, if I, I would like uh, to answer, but I don't understand it, unfortunately. <clears throat> Can you elaborate more on the axillary web syndrome? Whoever asked this question, because there is no name for the question. Um, and then uh, I have a patient getting fibrotic ring around and near the axilla where the top of the sleeve placed. How mm -hmm. to manage? So there mm -hmm. is some fibrosis on the axilla on the top of the sleeve and you want to know how to manage with the arm sleeve. Yeah, um, as I said at the beginning, um, and I, I wrote it also in the in the chat, um, the most important is the measurement. If you if you do measurement for the, the whole arm, yeah, and you have have the good luck to have a healthy site. Then you should also uh, look at the healthy side, do the measurement, and do the measurement on the weak side. And uh, if you do your compression, and if you do your uh, treatment, your lymphatic drainage, and you see that you don't have an effort with that, then you can think about fibrosis in the axillary region. After knowing that, it is not useful and it is not sensible to do a lymphatic drainage on the whole arm. It just makes sense to do the lymphatic drainage onto this area where you think that you will find the fibrosis, that you have the fibrosis, and there you need fibrosis treatment. Fibrosis treatment means scar treatment means that you do standing circles and and pushing you you do um you place some different uh types of of padding on this area and then you do the bandaging and overlapping over this area and you have to go over it don't stop in this area that's what i i you saw on the video of mine, that you go over it, and then hopefully the 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 fluid, the the liquid uh, can go through this area again, and that's very important because otherwise you you get more and more of um, um, protein onto this wall of fibrosis, and then the fibrosis grows up because the protein gets to fibroblast and the fibroblast will at at the end will 
uh, close every door up to. Mm. I hope I hope you can understand me. Yes. Um, and and you can put different types of padding with different pressure and uh, then do the overlapping onto the, the, the shoulder, the acromion, the, the clavicular, however, with the long stretch, because otherwise the patient can't move anymore. That's that's too strong. And then the patient hopefully does a little bit of movement exercises, um, the normal daily daily ex daily movements, and then you can reduce the fibrosis. Mm -hmm. That's how so I would I would treat it, and and that's how we had afford with it, and always do the measurement, but don't think that. Oh, we have a fibrosis, so we are not allowed to do lymphatic drainage anymore because we are not allowed to push the lymph edema against this fibrosis, against this wall of fibrosis. It's dangerous because it grows up. Don't think that you shouldn't do compression. Of course, you do, you should do compression because with this, you reduce uh, the fluid. Do you understand? You 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 reduce the possibility because there is more pressure than in the interstitium than in the in the venous system, and so you go back with the fluid into the blood system. That's why you don't have that much edema. I hope that was that was to understand mm -hmm. with my poor English. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, the axillary whip syndrome is named by cording, the cording, or I think it's also re related to the fibrosis in the axillary area. Uh, yes, okay, then then it was the, the answer. It's the same uh, answer, same question. Yes, a lot yeah. of a lot of standing circles in this area, a lot of scar treatment. Don't use too much pressure. Otherwise, if you have bad luck, you get lymph cysts. And, and nobody wants that. A lymph cyst is 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 worse than the, the fibrosis, so not too much pressure. And also um, be very careful in the region where the patients had the radiation, because the skin um, is unhealthy there and not to to get a, an infection there. Yeah. With this yeah. car treatment, not too, not too hard, more, more soft, but, but a lot of repetitions, a lot, a lot of repetitions, and the patients also can learn it by themselves very easily, and it's not so important in which direction they move the skin. It's just to move it so that that we can go through it. Okay. Uh... I think we'll take another two questions. When to use class three compression sleeve for fibrotic change? I think it's also related to the same. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, can I we use the lymph? Yeah. Yeah. About the classification, that was the question before. Uh, we don't have effort with uh, with number two for the venous system, but for the for the lymphatic system, it's enough. It works. Yeah. Uh, can we use lymph press machine after applying ready wrap? You know the pneumatic pressure machine. Its name is called the brand called lymph press. So the 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 machine as we as we saw in my in my presentation. Yes. Yes. Then intermittent pneumatic pressure machine. Um, this pneumatic machine could be used after you have prepared the areas above. If you if you have a patient and you you have a secondary lymph edema on the leg, and you know that the that it's because of um, uh, surgery in the in the pelvis somewhere, um, then you have a scar there, and the the lymph edema doesn't know the right way now. It it doesn't work anymore because the inguinal lymph nodes, the iliacal lymph nodes, the lumbar lymph nodes don't work anymore. So this way is closed. If you now go and pump up all the, the fluid to this region, 
you will cause a severe fibrosis, I think. So you have to, pre to prepare all, all of these areas above, as you have learned it for lymphatic drainage, to, for example, to pump it up to the axillary lymph nodes, to go to the back and go up to the, to the, uh, to the neck. However, the way will be that you find you have to prepare this and you have to be sure that you push the lymph edema up, not to, to, lay, to, to stay there in this region where we had already the surgery and we cause more and more protein and more and more fibrotic uh, tissue yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... If the the last question we take, if there is segmental edema which is bothering the patient, what would you recommend, sleeve or bandage? I mean, segmental edema is meaning asymmetrical edema. I think. Um, it, yeah. If if it's a symmetrical edema and it is on the arm. Asymmetrical. It's asymmetrical edema. Segmental. It, it's support. It's asymmetrical, so because I think so. Um, because if if you have symmetrical, perhaps it's it's important to say it. Um, if you have symmetrical edema, you also have to think about contraindication for compressions. You you have to think about heart problems. Uh, the cardiovascular system perhaps does not work. That's that's just. Um, a little comment of mine. Also think about that. If it's symmetrically, uh, think about is everything okay with the with the with the heart? Otherwise, that would be a contraindication. Um, if you have problems with the nerve, if if you have pain, it would be a contraindication also. Um, if it's asymmetrically, if it's a, perhaps a primary lymphedema, I don't know. Um, then you can think about the different phases we have. If you want to do reduction, if you know that the next two weeks um, the edema will uh, go down, then why buying uh, an expensive sleeve? I wouldn't. But you can use the wrap. Of course you can, because mm -hmm. with this... You can reduce and you can use the wrap, of course, also in the reduction phase. Mm -hmm. mm, that's okay. that's the good thing of this. Yeah. Yep. I think. Okay. So I think we came to the end. There is some other question on the chat. I will be replying to this later on because of the time. Uh, I would like to thank you so much, Dr. Petro, for your time and for the informative uh, webinar today. Uh, thank, thanks for all the participants from all different countries. For the people asking for the price, we'll ask the sales members or the sales team to communicate with you regarding the price uh, of and the availability of the product in your countries after the webinar. Uh, thanks again and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank yeah. you. Um just just one yes. more comment of mine um, uh, to the exercises. The exercises are important for that the muscle the the muscle has to has to move. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to make static exercises. It really has. They they have always to be very dynamic exercises, and you start at the distal area with the fingers, then you go on to the hand, then you uh, you do movement of the hand, go to the elbow and then go up. Yeah, perhaps the, there was one question that we that we missed. What exercises do you yeah. teach? Yeah. Yep. OK. OK. Yes, I also want to thank a lot. I, I'm it's really a pity with my with my presentation. I'm very sorry of this. Uh, because I would have liked to to show you the the, the short stretch bandaging, it was not possible. Um, but I hope you you had some. I I said something that you can use for your life as a physiotherapist, as a edema therapist, 
and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.